All right, then, lads, welcome back to Kossi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kossi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. I was catching up with an ESPN story uh, about Palo Dybala, and we are going to discuss it in this video. But also, uh, I was going through your comments on the last quiz. Many of you terribly, terribly did well yeah guys you did really well so the question yesterday yeah the question for yesterday's video was which name did arsenal take on when they were first created in 1886 and many of you got it right that name was dio square so arsenal in 1886 when we were first created um uh, by a group of workers uh, at the royal armory in the uk we were named Dio Square. Of course, our uh, you know the cl the name of the club kept on changing from uh, from time up to time. They were also called the Royal Arsenal, then Woolwich Arsenal, then the Arsenal until when they were called Arsenal FC. So thanks everybody who got involved in the uh, in in the quiz. I do have another question for you today in the quiz, and that question is about Thierry Daniel Henry. Now the question is, how many goals did Thierry Henry score? In the Premier League for Arsenal, how many goals did Charlie Henry score in the Premier League for Arsenal? Remember that uh, you know um, uh, you know he played two hundred and fifty eight games, uh, you know uh, Premier League games for Arsenal, and he recorded seventy four assists. He's the second player with the best goal per game ratio but how many exactly how many did he score and the options i've got i've given you there you have a 175 b 199 c 311 and then d you have uh, 201 the tip i'm giving you he's the second player behind kunaguero to have the best goal per game ratio right so in this video we're going to be discussing Paolo Dybala we'll discuss Cedric Suarez the future of Ruben Neves and also Leno to Newcastle and Mikel Arteta's new contract as well do me a favor let's get this video to 300 likes make sure you know, make sure you hit the like button of course get involved in the chat as you answer those questions as you answer the quiz who I'm sorry how many goals did our legend Tierly Daniel Henry score in the Premier League. Of course, he's already in the Premier League Hall of Fame. Let's get into the content. Now, to start off with the content, like I said, I was a little bit late because I was uh, catching up with an exclusive from ESPN. James Ole, one of my best journalists at, uh, at ESPN. Look, I, I think I pretty love every, every, everyone uh, at, uh, at ESPN. Gabs and uh, I think I love everyone at, at ESPN, but James Oli um, uh, has been reporting at, uh, about the situation for you know between Arsenal and Paulo Dybala, and he said yesterday Arsenal did make a concrete move, we, uh, and they met the representatives of Paulo Dybala. He's gonna be free in the summer. Uh, Arsenal know that they have always wanted him uh, as a player, and ever since that story coming out that he was going to be a free agent, Arsenal have always wanted to sign him as a player. So yesterday. Today we met with the representatives of Paulo Dybala. Now, according to James Ole, a couple of other clubs are also interested, and a couple of other clubs have met the representatives and agent of the player, including Atletico Madrid and Inter Milan. Now, in my opinion, look, I think that's that would be a very good move for Arsenal, very very good move uh, to go for Paulo Dybala. You know, given the financial. I think benefits around the deal. He's just, a, you know, he's, he's a free agent. He just need to pay his wages, um, and you know, just a sign-on fee for the player, a sign-on fee for the agent, and then it all works out. But if we are bringing in um, Gabriel Jesus in the first place, I think Paulo Dybala is more like a Gabriel Jesus. At first, I thought um, w when I had just seen him go to Juve, a couple, you know, many years ago, I thought he was. Um, I thought he was a number 10. I thought he was that kind of number 10 that loves to create assists and things like that. Actually, to some extent, I thought he was like, more like a Bruno Fernandes. But the more I watch Paulo Dybala, the more I look at him, he's a support striker. He's, he's a striker. Look, the, short as he is, of course, he doesn't have that area of uh, and things like that. We'll we will talk about uh, that in, our, in his uh, scout report on the channel. But 
I think he's got that movement of Gabriel Jesus. And for me, bringing in Paulo Dybala and Gabriel Jesus, financially, economically, good for Arsenal. But then they're so similar. They're very, very similar. I think what you need is a player like Victor or Simeno, Tammy Abraham, or, or, or whoever, uh, you know, a player with, you know, that kind of aerial, uh, you know, aerial area threat a player who is a fox in the box and then you can also bring in Gabriel Jesus because what Gabriel Jesus gives you is more of a facilitator on that forward line that player who can you know link up well with others link up well with the likes of Odegaard Saka Martinelli Smith Pro on that front line and just give you what Lacazette is giving you to the club when, we, when it comes to you wanting a number nine a typical fox in the box a typical gunman that i don't think paulo dibala would be the player so i'm gonna say paulo if if, if we bring in paulo dibala then gabriel Jesus, no unless arsenal are going to go crazy and go with three striker signings in the summer which i do not have a problem with whether we go to champions league or the europa league i i, I would do as many players as we can and remember the good thing with paulo dibala as well he's played at a top level He's a winner. He's got the winning mentality. Of course, we've seen it. You know, we've seen it with uh, uh, Juve. They've won a couple of um, a couple of Italian Serie A's. Uh, I think back to back. How many are they? I mean, someone should tell me how many are they. Have, have they won seven? Were they six? I, I'm not even sure. Uh, but you know, you can see that you know at least more than Osimhen, more than the likes of uh, um, uh, DCL. For him, he's got that quality. Champions, uh, Champions League quality has been played in the Premier League and uh, played in the Champions League, and then he's also got that winning mentality. He's a winner, you know. He knows how to win things. And at some point in time, when it comes to probably two or three years uh, from now, when Arsenal start challenging seriously for uh, all, you know, in, in all competitions, we will need that mentality. Not only leaders, not only the experience, but then we'll need you know players who've been there before, players who can uh, you know actually help us get over. Uh, you know that pressure and you know who know to what to do in such situations i think palo dibala would be bringing that to the side but of course we wait to see what is going to happen out of that now yesterday as well according to uh, reports from italy and sky sports uh, uh, the, the the representatives and agents of uh, victor osimen met with the, the representatives and owners of napoli fc now it is believed that the agents and representatives of the player are interested in moving their man to the Premier League. Not particularly Arsenal, but to the Premier League. It is also being reported that other clubs are looking at Victor Osimhen and not only Arsenal in the Premier League. However, uh, for me, what I know and what I can confirm is that Arsenal have approached the player and the representatives and they know what exactly we want. They know the amount of money we are willing to give their man uh, in terms of wages and in terms of bonuses as well. Napoli are willing to sell, but they've said any club should be coming in with 100 million euros plus bonuses for them to be thinking about selling the player so yesterday uh, the agent and representatives of the player met with the owners the bosses at napoli to see whether they are going to be letting him go whether they can reduce their demands because for me i feel look Osimhen has a high ceiling. Osimhen is still young, 23 years of age he's still so young and if you bring him in this arsenal side you know you might be giving him you know a condition and environment to thrive in but 100 million i feel that is paying over the odds i think he will get to that level he might get to that level he's not yet done it and he's not yet there yet, but he will get there honestly i don't know when but i feel he will get there so let me know where uh, what you think about uh victor osimen as well of course we continue the discussions around the transfers on a daily basis now yesterday again uh, reports from the uk and around arsenal confirmed that at the end of the season Mikel Arteta will be penning his contract extension at arsenal now it was reported by gold.com uh, a couple of months ago that despite um you know the finish in the league Mikel Arteta would sign a new contract whether arsenal finish eighth or finish ninth or finish uh, tenth Mikel Arteta would sign a new contract with the club. Now, the feeling around the club, and according to sources closer to the club, they say that Mikel Arteta is really, really appreciated by KSE, that is Cranky Sports and Entertainment. Well, yeah, I say that. I say, yeah. yeah. Look, he's appreciated and he will be backed, right? So, 
I don't want you guys to go on clipping my videos and say, because you said they're going to back him, they didn't back him. But that is according, that is the feeling around the club and sources close the club. That is what they're revealing, that Kroenke backs Mikel Arteta 100%. He's got the backing of the board and the backing of, um, you know, of the owner. And in the summer, according to Edu and a couple of other sources, they feel they will be backed. They feel it's going to be huge, massive server. Not one where many players could be coming in, but one where Arsenal expect to bring in huge quality in, uh, in, uh, in exchange of huge numbers. So we might see Arsenal bring in a superstar player. We do not know yet what is being considered as a superstar player to Mikel Arteta and Edu at the moment. But what I can confirm is that Arsenal are looking to bring in a superstar signing and Mikel Arteta at the end of the season will be given the money to spend in the summer plus a new contract he has proven now my question to you in the comments as well i mean i'm, I'm asking you a lot isn't it has Mikel Arteta inspired you has Mikel Arteta cajoled you and that is the word because for me football is a, a, a football is a game of emotions low scoring game but lots of emotions. And that's why I use that word, cajole. Actually, I could even go ahead and use the word manipulate. Has he manipulated you to feeling that he is the right boss to take Arsenal forward? Or, do, or has he convinced you enough that at least for the next five years, he needs to stay with this Arsenal, with the project he's building, and do you think it will actually come, you know, uh, come to give us ripe, ready fruits? Under the watch of Mikel Arteta. Let me know in the comments below. But according to re uh, reports and sources close to the club, yes, he will be signing his new contract come the end of the season. Bruno Large has been speaking about Ruben Neves yet again. Again, a story that has been uh, published by uh, uh, um, published by ESPN. That's why I was late a little bit uh, as well. Now, uh, Bruno Large was asked about him uh what's about what's about uh, what's asked about uh, ruben nevis and he said look we value him at 100 million anything will happen in the summer we have to be ready now i, I think I, I love the version of um of, of sky and espn on how they've written it they've said Wolves demanding 100 million in uh, in, uh, in 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 Ruben Nevis. Now I'm going to make three points about this. Three, and then I'll ask you uh, for your for your opinions in the comments. One, Ruben Nevis is not worth 100 million. Not worth 100 million. Look, um, the fact that he's not even English. Look, I think he's played consistently well for Wolves over five six years in the Premier League. That is good. He's re you know he's reliable. He's consistent, um, and I think he's got the quality. But 100 million. That is total disrespect of figures. 100 million, absolute disrespect. For, you know for the numbers. 100 million. What can 100 million bring you in a transfer window? Ask Arsenal last summer. They will tell you. So he's not worth 100 million. And number two, they will not keep him. And they know they will not keep him. They're trying to, uh, you know, kind of scare away uh, some of, um, you know, some of the talk before the season ends. They want the player to be 100% committed. I think last season they were so lucky to keep him. And this summer they know. We cannot keep him. All we are going to do is to play some PR, uh, you know, throw some, you know, huge cards on the table, try to scare Manchester United and, uh, and, and, and Arsenal. And I think Wolves are in a very, very poor situation because if you look at the central midfield market, you don't need to be, you don't need to pay high lots of, you know, lots, uh, you know, very expensive prices, for, you, know, you know, to pay to get a very good player. You have the likes of Orange Germany um, that could be available for around 60, 70. You have the likes of uh, Calvin Phillips that could be av available for 50, 60 as well. Then you have uh, you, you have the likes of um, uh, Bubakar Kamara, free agent in the summer. Yevid Bisuma, 45 to 50 million uh, in the summer as well. He could be walking. Yuri Tillemans, uh, 25 mil. Uh, look, th there is nothing to brag about. There's nothing to brag about. Having a consistent, um, you know, solid central midfielder that is good for you as woes. But in the market, there's so many out there. There's, there's, there's so many. I could go for Lucas Paqueta. We could go for Edson Alvarez like I did in that video. We could, look, spending 100 million on Ruben Neves, I would rather spend that money 
um, on Jude Bellingham. Because again, Bellingham, 100 million quid, uh, you put it on the table for Do Borussia Dortmund, they'll be like, uh, look, uh, uh, we never wanted to sell this summer, but uh, I think, that, uh, you know, because that's what they do, Dortmund. They, they will sell. They will always sell. Or you could go and get a Frankie de Jong. You know, he's been a very, very good player for Barca for me. Uh, despite the fact that many people feel he's, uh, you know, he's, he's not been, you know, he's not lived to the standards. But you could go get Frankie de Jong from Barcelona. He can act as a best. Uh, he can act as a six. Can play as an eight. He can play on both, uh, you know, on both wings of the midfield as a left midfielder, as a right midfielder. We've seen him this season, you know, playing with Pedri just ahead of Sergio Busquets and. Mwah. That was one of the best partnerships I've seen at Barcelona in a while. I'm not really saying all, you know uh, all the time, but in a while, at least in a while. So for me, Ruben Neves, lads, not really, mm -mm. not really, not really, not really. Uh, Saka is expected to be fit for the Sunday game against uh, uh, West Ham, so that is a, a bit of good news. I'm dropping my video today of how to beat West Ham. They played uh, against Frankfurt uh, and they lost two one. Frankfurt nearly, nearly scored a third, and um, um, uh, West Ham also, as the game ended, through Bowen, nearly scored uh, uh, a second. So, for me, it was a very good game. It should have ended 3-3 because Jared Bowen, Bowen was, uh, you know, denied by the woodwork once and also denied by the post once. And also, I think it was Kamada who was denied by the post also once for, uh, for, for, for Frankfurt. Very entertaining game. Very open game. I think we'll see the same. But West Ham are now thinking about the second leg. That was a massive point for us. They're thinking about the second leg. They're tired. And they know you cannot put up, you know, you cannot commit all the numbers, all the efforts against Arsenal because the top forest is already gone and then you drop out of the Europa League semi-finals. That was an advantage for us. Really an advantage. Cedric Soares is looking to leave the club according to reports but uh, Charles Watts and Gold from Gold.com has come out and said, look, it is not yet confirmed. The player still has a contract until 2023. His priority would be staying at Arsenal if he's given the chance. In my opinion, he's got to live and of course learn to new castle as well hit the like button subscribe to the channel as well that is um uh the morning update the quiz question is and join me in the comments below in 258 appearances chill Henry managed 74 assists in the premier league but how many goals did he score for arsenal in those 258 appearances and you have the options 175 199 311 or 201 the clue of that to, uh, the clue to that is that behind Kunaguero, Chile Daniel Henry has the best um, has the best goal per game ratio in the Premier League. Let me know how much you love Henry in the comments. Do you think he's the best player ever to play for Arsenal? And if you think he's not the best player ever, then do you think the best player could be probably Patrick Vieira or Dennis Parkham? And if, 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 if it's none of those, who could it be? Let me know in the comments below. My name is Kossi, and I'll speak to you in a bit.